I'm going to be continuing where we left off last week in the notes in terms of the theory. We've got two slides right. here covering a piecemeal liquidation. Before we start with a piecemeal liquidation, do you remember the two types of liquidations we have? Yeah, it was piecemeal and it was... Um, I can't remember. I have to go back to the notes. It's fine. Simultaneous. Simultaneous. That's right. Okay, That's so right. when we looked at a simultaneous liquidation... There were three accounts that we said there were three accounts that we said was important. What are the three accounts? Do you remember? Yep, liquidation, bank, and capital. Good. Okay, so the same thing applies here, except we're not going to be looking at liquidation. We're only going to be focusing on bank, capital, and then we're going to be looking at what the owners are entitled to, which is assets and liability. So before you had one account representing everything. In this particular application in terms of a liquidation, you need to keep things separate. So it's a bit different to simultaneous because now you're looking at each account separately. You're not looking at it as one account. So you're still going to have bank, okay. you're still going to have capital, except you'll have other accounts as well. And it's normally done in a table format. Okay. So we'll look at rows and we'll look at columns. That's how this particular application is um, is done in terms of the actual format or the layout. Are we going to have any accounts open at the end? Sure, I suppose not. No, yeah, because we're liquidating the business no. for whatever reason. It could be it could be the partners want to leave. Okay, they want to separate. It could be because the business isn't doing well. It could be because they want to maybe start a new business and they want to close this one. It could depend what the reasons are for closing the partnership. But right. irrespective of their reason, if we're liquidating the partnership, we're closing the business and we're paying out the partners. If it's piecemeal, it's done in stages. Why would you want to right. sell assets in stages and not at one point in time, like a simultaneous type of liquidation? Well, I mean, if, if the market isn't good, good and you maybe sell at the later stage to get a little bit more money, then I suppose you can wait a while. Correct. Okay, that's the right answer. Because if you think about a partnership, A and B would have been running the business for a few years, potentially. And now they're in a situation where they're looking at closing the business to start new or to retire or to do something else. So it might not be the best stage or time to sell those assets simultaneously, meaning at one point in time. As you said, it might be better to hold on to those assets for a bit longer and try to get more when selling them. So when looking at steps, you're always going to see this account, capital. Why? Because it's to do with the owners. Correct. It shows you what each owner is worth in terms of their entitlement. So if I'm closing off accounts, am I going to keep accounts like drawings open? No. No. And current account? No. No. Okay, so any partner-specific account, even goodwill and reserves, any account that relates to the partner is closed off to capital. We did that with a simultaneous liquidation. We're going to do the same thing here with a piecemeal liquidation because we're closing the business. So when closing the business, you need to establish what the partners are worth and then pay out what's due to each of the partners. Okay. This is a bit different compared to a simultaneous liquidation because you're looking at interim repayments. So things are done in stages. We're going to be looking at all the expenses, the liabilities, the receipts in a line by line application in terms of rows and columns. And we're going to be focusing on this. When do the partners get paid out? So when do they get paid out? At the end. Um, before or after the creditors, the liabilities? No, after. After, good. See, that's important. So when doing a piecemeal liquidation, you need to always monitor this, the liabilities. Okay, you need to keep track of what they are because you can't pay anything out until you've paid all of those creditors. So you might or might not have liabilities in the question. You probably will, though, because you need to pay them off first. And then what's left over is given to the partners. 
And then step four is obviously to settle their accounts. We're going to end up with zero balances. Okay. So my question to you here is what happens if we have this scenario? Let's say we've got A and we've got B and they're running a partnership. A has capital of 100 and B has capital of 10. Who's the better partner? A. A, definitely. Do you agree if A has more capital, that means A has either given more to the business or A hasn't taken as much from the business? Yes. So now, if we're looking at their owner's equity, do you agree A and B are running the business, so both of them are owners of the business, they're jointly liable for all the debts of the business? Yeah. What happens now if they've got cash and they've got assets or other assets available? So let's say this 110, obviously owner's equity equals A minus L. So let's assume that this 110 in terms of equity comprises of assets of 70 and liabilities of 40. Okay, and of the 70 here, there's 10 which is cash. Okay, so looking at that scenario, can we liquidate the business? Well, yes we can. When liquidating the business, we'll be selling things in stages. So we won't sell all 70 today because those are our assets. Okay. Uh, hold on, it needs to be a bit bigger. So this is not going to add up. I need to change this figure. This is too small. Okay, 40 uh, minus 40 and then you've got 10. So I need 150 here. What? I was a bit confused there. Yes. Oh, geez. Yeah, I can no, see okay. why. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, the numbers aren't um, working because assets need to be greater than liabilities to get the 110 okay so that makes sense okay so if i've got assets of 140 and 10 of it is cash well 150 is the total so 140 is the other and 10 is the cash all right okay so 10 is the cash so looking at this who gets paid out first uh still the um the creditors yes the liability so do we have cash available? Yes, we do. We've got 10 available. If I pay off the 10, okay, what's going to happen to the liabilities? It'll decrease, right? Yeah, it'll so that'll be zero, and this will now be? 30. 30. Okay, yeah. so you've paid off the liabilities. You've still got 30 left over. So yeah. can you pay out any of the partners? No. Not yet, okay, because you first need to sell enough of your assets to cover the liabilities and then only after you've settled the liabilities can you now start paying out the partners. Okay. Okay, so always try to keep track of that, the liabilities, how much is still owed. Okay. Because you first need to eliminate that amount before you can do anything with the partners in terms of sharing any of the assets that are left over. Okay, so if there are assets left over, so now let's assume that you've got A and B and A still has 100 and B still has 10. But now we've, we've paid off all the liabilities and we've got 50, that's cash, that's available to be distributed. And then you've still got 60, which is other assets, which still need to be sold. Okay. So now the question is, who gets how much of the 50? Do they each get half of it? No. Does B get all of it? Does A get no. all of it? Who gets no, the 50? You must look at the ratio, I suppose. Is it according to the ratio? So if they do have a ratio, let's say the ratio was 1 to 2. So B gets no. 2 and A gets 1. Okay. Will it be according to the ratio, even though A has more equity in the business? No, it can't be. Yeah, it would be. Do you, do you see how it's creating a problem? Yeah. All right, because now if they're liquidating for, let's say, for more negative reasons. So let's say this business is actually doing bad. Okay. Right, and this business has actually failed in terms of um, not having enough assets to meet liabilities. They've literally sold everything. And all that's left is 50 that needs to be distributed to them. Okay. Do you agree they're probably going to be fighting over what's left? 
Yeah, oh, for sure. Okay, or what B might be saying is, well, B might say, well, I only have 10 equity in the business. Can't I take 10 of the 50 and then leave the business and then A is stuck with the rest of the assets? But that's unfair. It is unfair. So how do we then deal with that situation? Because in reality, a partnership can end very badly if the partners don't yeah. agree on the, let's say, the, the terms and conditions, the split. Oh, I can imagine. Okay, so that creates a problem. So what do the accountants do? They use a loss absorption capacity method. This is the method that you're going to be using to allocate cash that's available to the partners who actually deserve it or to the partners who actually um, are entitled to it. So in that example that we had earlier, the answer to the question is we follow the loss absorption capacity method. That's how we apportion the cash. We don't look at anything else. There is another method. I mentioned that last week. There are two methods in the actual textbook. They don't test the other method. They only test this one. So don't worry about that one. If you are going through the textbook as well, just ignore it. Just follow this one with the loss absorption capacity method. And it's, it's yeah. quite easy to understand because we're looking at this. Maximum anticipated loss. Right, so with the maximum anticipated loss, you're looking at if the company had to close its doors today, okay, how much is still left over and who would actually get what's left over? So when doing a loss absorption capacity method question, the focus here is what's left over. Okay, okay. after a maximum anticipated loss. So you're assuming you can't sell any more of your assets and with okay. what's left over, we're going to look at who actually is entitled to it. Okay, it'll make more sense when we look at an example. Okay, so just remember it's maximum anticipated loss. We're saying in today's terms, if I can't sell any more of the assets, what do I have and who gets what's left? That's what we're looking at. Okay, there are some steps here that you can follow. The steps are quite easy to do when you actually see the questions because it always focuses on closing off accounts. So the account that we first have to close off are partner specific accounts so one example could right. be current account that's a that's a partner specific account can you think right. of other partner specific accounts capital capital well capital will will be open you'll be closing current to capital what other accounts do we close to capital drawings good if we have a drawings account you would definitely close it off to capital what else there's one oh. more um expenses no a reserve oh a reserve okay. okay a reserve is equity that you've set aside that belongs to the partners it comes from the profit from the past that hasn't been paid out okay. so when the partnership closes they're entitled to the reserve okay so we close off all of the different accounts to capital and we then look at what is available to be distributed to the partners Okay, so as and when cash becomes available, remember, we're still going to have to pay for expenses that arise from the liquidation. So you might, you might have something like a liquidation um, expense, okay, because it costs something to liquidate the assets, and that'll be taken into consideration when processing the actual accounts. Okay, so closing off the accounts, closing off assets, closing off liabilities, that'll be included in the actual cost of the business. Okay, is this business operating? Yes. No, it's not operating because we've chosen to liquidate it. Oh, uh, okay. So did you stop all activities as well? Yes. Okay. So this is just a business that's literally sitting idle. You're not doing anything okay. other than waiting to sell assets. Okay. Okay. So that's what we're looking okay. at in terms of the liquidation. You stop okay. operations and you just focus on selling assets. You sell them as and when you require them to be sold. So basically, if you've got a building and you know that it's worth 50, but you can only get 25 now, if, if you have to wait the year, so you wait the year? Yes. Okay. Okay. So that building, that building will stay in the partnership. Okay. So yeah. you, you, you're still going to have to pay for the day-to-day, -day, let's say, uh, the municipal bills, the water and light, yes. if, it is, if there are any expenses. 
But other okay. than that, you're not operating. There's no business being conducted from the from the building. Okay. So I can go his, his own, but do his own thing and maybe find another job and be the same. Correct. Yeah, but then they still have entitlement to the assets yeah. of the partnership. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. So at the end of the day, what's left there? is waiting to be sold so it, it takes time so for example like it's like buying property it takes a while for the transaction to go through yes, okay exactly. the same thing here it takes a while for the partnership to close okay okay so while you're waiting for it to close okay you can do other things as well but whatever is part of the partnership stays in the partnership and we then look at those accounts separately perfect okay Right, and that's the theory. So that's the chapter that we needed to look at in terms of study unit four. Okay, I'm going to close these notes now because we don't need them. We're now going to look at the activity. Okay, exercise 4.2. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to actually do the piecemeal liquidation. Okay. Okay, so the first step doesn't change. What do you always do in every question? Uh, determine what elements we're working with. Correct. So tell me what these are. Okay, the first three is capital. Correct. They don't change. So what balances will they have? They will have a credit balance. Good. Okay, next. Uh, equipment at carrying cost. That is an asset. Good. Goodwill. As an asset. Good. Bank. Bank. It's favorable, so it's an asset. Correct. And receive uh, payables? That's a liability. Correct. Okay, good. So now you know what they are. Right, so when doing a piecemeal liquidation, we need to draw up a table of values. Okay, so I'm going to go to um, the workings here. Okay, we're obviously going to start with a balance. All right, we're going to have capital for all these partners. Okay, capital S. Uh, capital. I am all. Capital S. I think it was, what is it? A and R. A R. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay, source, yeah. age, and, and then roll. Let's put that in. Capital A and R. There we go. Okay, we've got the four, uh, the three partners, and we need their amounts. Okay, what were the amounts? Capital S? Uh, 7,000. A? Uh, 14. And R? 18. 18, great, thanks. Okay, so we've got those amounts. Right, so remember, these are workings that you're doing in terms of interpretation. So you've identified the accounts. That's always step okay. number one. You need to know what the accounts are. Okay. Okay, so now we know what they are. We've included them in our table. Okay, remember it's a table, so we're going to have columns and rows. Okay, so let me draw okay. some of those. And then we need to carry on with the actual processing of the liquidation. Okay, what liquidation is this? It's a piecemeal liquidation. So things are sold in stages. That's the key. Okay, think of the word piece. When you see the word piece, it's, it's a part of something. Okay, so you haven't sold everything. You've just sold a part of it. All right, what were the first accounts that we had? Um, let's go back and see. We had equipment. Okay, so we had equipment of 42. Yeah. Let's write that down. And then goodwill of three. Okay, so equipment. 42. What type of account? Um, asset. Asset. And then Goodwill. Also asset, 3,000. Okay. Um, what's after Goodwill? Bank. Bank. Okay, great. We said that was an asset, so we can write that down. And was there anything sitting in the bank? Yeah, 5,000. 5,000. Okay. And then we had the trade payables, which is the creditors. Yep. Right, we know that's a liability. Yep. It's and 11,000. Seven. 11. 11. Okay, there we go. All right, so something to look at that's quite useful to do. So I want to show you this. Okay. If I then work out what the owner's equity is, you can actually determine what the actual amount is in terms of its um, balances. Okay, so I normally show this as well as I do these questions. Just as an, an additional understanding point. Okay, so what does owner's equity comprise of? Assets minus liabilities. Okay, well, that's the equation for it. But what does owner's equity actually comprise of? It will be the capital, it will be assets, it will be goodwill. 
Okay, no, the capital and the drawings and any profit or loss. Okay. Okay, so if I look at owner's equity here, remember you've got two equations. Let me write them down here on the right. Okay, when we did some revision, okay, from 1502, the first module, um, you would have covered owner's equity as this, capital plus minus profit slash loss minus the drawings. Okay, that was actually in the revision note that we started with in week one. And then we also had this one, assets minus liabilities. Do you agree? Okay, so there, there are two different equations for the same thing. Okay, so if I look at this question, what are my capital accounts? They are equity. So if I add up all of these, um, sum up all of that, I get 39,000. Right, and then okay. surely on this side of the transaction or this side of the of the owner's equity, okay, I should have the same thing, right? If I look at assets minus liabilities. Okay, so what are my assets? Equipment? Equipment, goodwill and bank. Correct. And then you've got one liability, which is creditors. Credit. Okay, which is obviously a negative. So if I had to add up all those amounts, so this amount, equipment plus goodwill plus bank minus creditors, what do I get? I also get 39,000. Okay, so you can see that what you have here and what you have there is the same. Because remember, who's entitled to the assets liabilities of the company? Uh, the partners. Exactly, the partners. So these partners own those assets and liabilities. Right, so step number yeah. one, always. Close off what? Yeah, Partner-specific account. accounts. Okay. Anthony. Yes. You also hear that noise in the background all the time. Uh, what noise? It's like a scratchy the whole time. Really? Okay, let me just check my uh, audio here. It's like something is swinging or dangling or something against a speaker or something. It's so annoying. Okay, just hold on a sec. Let me see if I can fix it. Okay, okay. Uh, are you talking about the specific instance? It must be the liabilities then. No, liabilities aren't partner-specific mm -hmm. accounts. Of course they're not, yeah. Which um, one is partner-specific accounts? Goodwill. Yes, goodwill. goodwill. Okay, so step number one is to close off partner-specific accounts. So close off goodwill. Okay, if I close off goodwill, I'm going to subtract, right? Yeah. So minus 3,000 there. And that's going to be given to who? To the partners. To the partners. It's going to affect the partners. All right. So if I'm looking at closing of goodwill, how do I close of that account? Well, it's an asset, so you have to credit it. You have to credit the asset, correct. So debit the capital yeah, and well. credit the... Uh, good one, yes. Yes, okay, so do you agree you're going to be debiting capital how many times? Three times. Correct, because you've got three different partners. Yeah. All right, so S, A, and R. Okay, so that's what we've got there. Right. right, so how much do we apportion to each partner? Well, the ratio was 5, 3, 2. Yes, see, that's important, good. Okay, so how many parts to S? Uh, five, out, five, five out of ten. Good. Okay, so times five over ten. And to A? Three over ten. Correct. Okay, so three over ten there and two over ten here. Is that right? Yeah, perfect. Okay, so now is this going to increase or decrease their capital? It's going to increase it. If you're debiting capital, what do you do to that oh, no, account? Sorry, sorry yeah, you're decreasing. Yeah, be careful. All right, think about the account as being a credit. So it's going to be a minus here. Okay. And a minus here as well. Okay. okay. So when looking at those accounts, the capital accounts has been affected negatively. Do you agree? So we've actually decreased the owner's equity in the business. Yes. All right. So those amounts are negative. 
Okay, so if I total up those columns, this amount of capital minus the fifteen hundred, okay, for all of these accounts, right, gives me those totals. Right, can I now monitor those totals? Uh, I can still monitor those totals. All right, if I look at my owner's equity, if I add up all of those amounts, those three give me thirty six. And if I add up those three amounts, I get 36. So does the equity still equal the assets and liabilities? Yes. Yes. Okay. So that's standard. That stays the same. Okay. So this needs to always balance as we go through the question. Okay. All right. The next bit over here um, is the liquidation. Okay. So the question goes on and they tell you, that you've liquidated assets according to those dates. So how many stages do we have here? Two. Two. Okay, so let's first look at the 1st of Feb. How much did you sell on the 1st of Feb? Uh, well, the carrying amount was 13. Yes. So is that still, or do we deduct that from the 42? Uh, well, that's correct because do you agree you've sold 13,000 Rand worth of assets? Okay. So if I've sold 13,000 Rand worth of assets, it's sold to who? Or, or let's say, let me put it this way. You've sold it, the business will receive the proceeds, right? Yes. And it's attributable to who? The partners. Yes, that's partners. correct. Okay, so did I make a profit or loss here? Um... Yeah, I'm not sure. Carrying amount was thirteen, and your proceeds are nine. So, 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 in actual fact, the carrying amount is that is what it was worth, but you only sold it for nine. Yes, is that what it is. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so then you made a loss. Correct. Good. Okay, so first liquidation. Proceeds equal uh what is it nine hey yeah nine thousand and then the carrying value was the 13. all yes. right so looking at that there is a loss of four thousand yeah correct so now okay. this loss is going to affect who uh the partners again the partners yes right so proceeds is going to do what to my bank uh, increase it correct so nine thousand will increase your bank and thirteen thousand will be taken from your Equipment. equipment yes okay so that's what okay. we've got there okay right and then we still need to apportion the loss between the partners all right okay so this will be there okay okay and how do they share that loss well five over ten correct three over two over ten good okay so according to their profit sharing ratio times five over ten Three over ten, oh. and two over ten. Okay. Okay. So now you've got that step. Let's now total up that step and see what's left in the business. Okay. Okay. So this minus the two thousand gives you that amount. Uh, hold on. Am I minusing? Uh, this should be a plus. Yeah, that's plus plus. That uh, minus is, yeah, it's correct. Okay, so the, the formula is right. Okay, great. Okay, so looking at that, do you agree that's the current situation after having sold part of our assets? Yep. Okay, so now once you've done that, again, if you want to, you should check. So I'm going to check again. Owner's equity equals assets minus liabilities. Um, this is, oh, I've left the creditors. Now I wonder. Oh, yeah. Okay. Can't forget about those. Put the creditors there. There we go. Okay, so just make sure you write down all the values. Okay, so I didn't write down creditors. Now I have. All of those amounts should balance. Okay, so 32 on this okay. side, 32 on that side. Perfect. Okay, so now what must I do? Well, I need to ask or answer the question, okay, is there cash available? 
Yes. Yes. Okay. Before I had how much cash? Five thousand. Was that enough to pay, to settle the liabilities? No. No. Okay. So I couldn't pay them off. If you wanted to, you could have paid off part of it, and then you would just have reduced it by five thousand. Okay. Okay. But I didn't have enough, so I now have enough. So can I pay them? Yes. Now I can. Yes. Now you can. Okay. So pay off all of the creditors okay we need to pay off creditors so if I pay off my creditors I'm going to require 11,000 okay from there and that will decrease my liability so am I still going to have a liability after having paid them uh. no all right so this amount stays the same that amount stays the same this amount is still zero okay this amount is now the 14 less 11. the 11, correct. Okay, so this amount minus 11 gives me 3,000. And do I have any liabilities? No. Not anymore. Okay, so this is a very important step that we're now at in terms of what does the partnership actually look like in terms of its balances. Okay, so I think let me just show that much. Okay, so from that step there. Right, so if I then again tally up my assets and liabilities. I've still got 32 here. Right, so the question is, does loss absorption capacity method apply? Question mark. How do we, how do we know if we must use loss absorption capacity method? What did we say earlier? Why, wh what is this method used for? It's when there's not enough cash to settle all the liabilities. No, it's, it's not that. It's when you have cash available after you've settled your liabilities. Oh, okay. Okay. But not enough to give it to everybody, the same amount, what's, what, what's due to them. Okay, yes. Okay, so you don't have enough to pay them all out. No. Okay, so does loss of loss capacity method apply? You need to check two things. Do you still have other assets? That's something to check. Okay. What's the answer? Yes or no? Yes, the answer is yes. The answer is yes. Okay, and number two, is there cash available to the partners? And what's that answer? Also yes. Correct. Okay, so we've got two yeses here. So will loss absorption apply? No. Yes, it will. Oh. Yes. Okay, oh, does okay. it apply? It must apply when you've got those two criteria being met. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. okay, so if you've still got assets and there's cash available, you're okay. going to apply it. Because do you agree, they're going to be fighting over this 3,000? Yes. Because and now who other... gets it? Do you give it all to S? Do you give it all to A? Or do you give it all to R? No, each guy must have a portion. Really? So must we just split it in three? No, 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 no. You can't just split it in three. Must we give it according to the ratio? Well, you said earlier, no. I thought you would, so... <laughs> yeah, so we can't. So this is the new bit that we need to um, that we need to look at. So I'm going to highlight this just to show you that this is just a separate working. It's a side working. Okay, so it's a side working that you do here. Um, if, you, if you've looked at their solution, you'll see they do it differently to how I do it. I always do it this way because it's easier to do it line by line and everything on one... <laughs> Um, working so all of this is here okay so then I write down this loss Anthony. absorption capacity method Anthony yes did we not look at stage two as well before we do this or does it come later okay you have to look at stage by stage you can't okay. look at both at the same time all right okay because stage two occurs in July oh I see okay this is in so Feb on each stage, you do this loss absorption capacity method. Only if you meet these requirements. So after every stage, you ask those two questions, and if the answer is yes, you do that. Correct. So and if one, if the answer is no, don't if the answer is no, then you don't apply loss absorption. Okay. okay. So if you have one yes and one no, if you have one yes and one no, you don't apply it. You okay. need to right. meet both requirements. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Great. All right. So. Hey. If I've got loss absorption, what did we say earlier? Loss absorption assumes a maximum loss. 
Yeah, anticipate loss. Correct. So we're basically saying, if I look at my assets and liabilities, I've only got assets left over. So yeah. if I have a max loss here, okay, a max loss for the equipment. That's what you're saying. Okay, so you're saying that if I assume that I have a maximum loss of minus 29,000, okay, what's going to happen to the value of the equity? It's going to decrease, right? Yes. So sure. if I assume a maximum loss here of 29,000, what does this equity drop by? 29,000? Yes. So 32 minus 29 minus that gives me 3,000. And then on this side, I'm saying 32 minus 29 gives me 3,000. Do you agree? Yes. Okay, so that's basically what the theory is saying. Okay, the theory is saying if I assume a maximum loss, meaning I can't realize anything of the 29,000. And okay. if, I, if I assume that as being true, this loss must be carried by who? By the partners. By the partners, exactly. Okay, so you, you then take that max loss, you assign it to the partners, and then you see who has 3,000 left over. Because the equity left over on this side must equal the assets left over on that side, which is only the bank. Okay. Okay, do you see what we're doing? Yep. So right. you never assume that the bank is also a loss, a potential loss. No, you never assume bank is a loss because that's cash that's paid out. It's only for the assets that must still be sold. Okay, perfect. Okay, because you're trying to allocate the cash. Okay. Okay. So if I have a max loss of that, how much of how much of the loss does S get? I don't know. Well, uh, do you use the profit ratio then? Yes. Okay. Five over ten. Yeah. Okay. Five over ten. Three over uh, three over ten. Two over ten. Two over ten. Good. Does that make sense? Yeah, 100%. All right, so that's the losses that they would have to allocate to the partners. Okay, okay. so now we need to total up what they would have if that had to happen. So this partner's capital, okay, minus his loss gives that amount. Then we do the okay. same for that partner and the same for that partner. So looking at this, who's the bad partner? Yes, S. Correct, S. S took either too much during the life of the partnership or didn't contribute enough. Okay. Remember, in a partnership, is this a separate legal entity? No. No. That means S, R, and A are all liable for the debts of the business. So if there's a loss, who pays for the loss? All three of them. A and R and S also if they're required to pay. But if you look at the question, they normally they normally give you this. Here's a chair. They explain that partners aren't going to have to pay anything to the partnership. Okay. Okay. So so if you if you're out of pocket, you're not going to have to pay into the partnership. Okay. Okay. That's what they describe there in terms of the loss absorption. Um, and the piecemeal. Okay, so looking at this, this 11,000, who carries yeah. that loss? The, the um, A, and B, A and R. Good. Okay, so see, now I need to highlight that because that <laughs> needs to be shared between Those two. A and R. And remember, what's the ratio? S gets 5, A gets 3, three. and R gets 2. Okay, so how do they share that loss? I suppose the same. Or is that, or is that, is that now 3 over 5? Yes. And 2 over... Well done. You got it. Okay. Okay. 3 <laughs> over 5? Yeah. Shit. 2 over 5. Yeah. That poor man is out of pocket as well now. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay, good. You're spotting some more things here. Okay, good. All right, so now let's do another total. This minus that gives <laughs> yeah. us 3,400. So who's another bad partner? Yeah, A is the second one in line. A is another bad partner. Okay, so the only partner that's responsible here is R. Who carries that loss? R, unfortunately. Exactly, unfortunately. So yes, 
that loss would be given to that partner. And how much does that partner have left over? 3000 Good. Okay, so now who gets paid out the cash? That partner, oh, he gets the three grand. He gets the three and the other partners get nothing. Yes, okay. Okay, see, this avoids, this avoids uh, fighting over the cash if the partnership uh, ends. Okay, I see. You see sure. that? Okay. Okay, so now this is a separate working. <coughs> You, you show this to the examiner so you can get marks for doing it. Okay, perfect. Okay. But after you've done it, all I wanted to know was who's the good partner. No. Oh, That's oh. all I wanted to know. <clears throat> okay, so now, if I take these amounts here and I move them down there, okay? Okay. I just want to bring the totals down so you can see them. Okay. Okay, so there's the totals. All right, yeah. what did we say? First interim repayment. Who gets the first interim repayment of this 3,000? Uh, oh. Correct. So minus three there and minus three there, and then we can total up again. Okay. Okay, so... Is that all right? You okay with that? You followed? Yep. Good. Okay, so now if you wanted to check, I always like checking because you can see if you're doing it right or not. Okay, okay. if I add up those amounts in yellow and I add up those amounts in green, I get 29 and 29. So have I done it correctly? Yes, you have. Yes, because the equity is still consistent with the assets and liabilities. Okay. Okay, that's step number one in terms of the first sale yeah. of assets now we need to look at the second sale so let me write that down um the first stage second stage now okay so okay. second stage it's the final stage second stage yep. of the liquidation what happens so they sold assets <clears throat> again how much do they sell they sell twenty nine thousand rand worth of assets for thirty three thousand they, they made a profit this time around good so did the peaceful liquidation work as planned no. Yes. Oh, yes. yes because what's the purpose of a peaceful liquidation? To hold assets so you can sell it for more later. Oh, uh, of course, yes. Okay. Okay. All right. So this twenty nine is going to come off where? Uh, well, from the equipment. Correct. Okay. So proceeds equals thirty three. Carrying oh. value equals twenty nine. Profit equals the difference, which is four. Do you agree? Yep. Okay, so proceeds will affect what account? Uh, bank. Correct. Goes up by 33. This equipment amount comes down by 29. Really? Who gets the profit? The uh, owners. Partners. Exactly, the partners. Good. Okay, so I'm going to take that amount and I'm going to allocate it to, your, to the partners. Okay, yep. so let's quickly just take those amounts okay all right so I'm going to allocate that to the partners 4,000 how much does s get Five out of 10. good and then three and two for the others yep three for this guy three for the three. other Two for him, four, two for him. Correct. Okay, so that's the profit that they share. Yeah. Right, so now I do the same thing again, total up. So I'm going to take that amount. I'm going to take what they had here plus what they're entitled to there. Okay, this amount minus the 29. Right, and then you've got that scenario. So again, if you wanted to check what's happening here, Okay, I can take owner's equity and I can work it out. There's the left, there's the right. Are they the same? Yep. Yes. Okay, so now my question to you is, does loss absorption capacity method apply? Okay, so the two questions. Do you still have other assets? Well, the answer is no, I suppose. 
Well, except, except for the bank. Uh, is there cash available to the partners? Yes. So does loss absorption apply? No. No, it doesn't. Okay, because there aren't other assets to be sold. Okay. Okay, so then the final thing is final distribution, final repayment. Okay. Okay, and the final repayment is, well, minus 33,000, minus 14, minus that, minus that. So now they all get paid out their shares. Okay. Okay, so that's the final repayment. And if I've done this correctly, this should all add up to zero for all of it. Oh, I see. Right, and that's loss absorption capacity method, piecemeal liquidation. It's actually pretty, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. It is pretty straightforward, Joe. And I know you like your maths, so you should find this quite easy to do because it's oh. quite mathematical. Exactly, yeah. Okay, is that all right? Just, it's just this portion in pink that you basically have to understand. Exactly, that, that portion is the key. Okay, so I'm going to do yeah. another one with you. There's, there's only two examples here in your, um, in your study guide. Okay, so... Um, but, I'm going to give you another example to try as well, um, but that one is for you to try, and then we'll discuss it later. I'll, I'll show you what, what the example looks like. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, they, they've just given you these two in the, um, in the study guide. There might be one in the assignment. Okay, we'll be looking at that in a few, um, a few weeks' time because we still need to do CCs. If you want to start with the assignment, you can actually, because after tonight, we've covered yes. all the partnerships. We've done study in a twos, three, and four. Is that what the first assignment is about, study unit 2, 3, and 4? Well, that's the big part of the assignment. We still need to okay. do CCs as well, which is next week. Next week, we'll start with CCs. Oh, excellent. I will start with the assignment then. I will make, make work of it over the weekend. Yeah, maybe just do the questions you can do. So do all the partnership questions and then leave the others for later. Okay, when, we, when we finish CCs, then you can go back and do those questions. There's only 10 questions okay. in the um, assignment, so it shouldn't be that bad. Okay, excellent. 100%. All right, great. Okay, so you're happy with this first example? Yeah, very much. Great. Very much, very much.